Hey guys, this is KSP with Tape, and today you join me for episode 6 of KSP, A New World. And it has been a while, but because my computer was doing things. Anyway, we start off with a launch, um, kind of our first launch to orbit where we're going to do an EVA. This is kind of like one of the Gemini missions, I guess, although Gemini carry two people to orbit instead of one. And this is being paid for by the manufacturer of those decouplers. They wish um, for me to test these in space, uh, well, in orbit around Kerbin. So that's what I'm doing there. It'll more than pay for my mission, which is good because every time I do one of these little missions that isn't really specifically to, like, go to the moon or something or something that would definitely pay, I like to take on a mission that'll just, you know, cover the cost because uh, this is on hard mode. So money is actually pretty tight now. You have to buy buildings and stuff. Um, but, you know, I'm... I'm poodling through, but that does mean there is, you know, quite a bit of um, taking satellites to orbit and stuff, but I always try to speed through that and do some interesting things, and we do have interesting things to do today. Anyway, let's push this into orbit. Jebediah Kerman looks, well, kind of perplexed by what's going on, but uh, hopefully happy and excited that he's going to walk in space. Well, not walk, kind of float, I guess, but it is called a spacewalk. Anyway, that's um, those decoupled and our mission paid for. It's now time for the real, the really cool big bit of the mission. So we're going to take an EVA airport above the oceans. And this will be a bit of a science spam. I haven't really been able to science spam so much because I haven't been able to EVA. Usually I just, like, um, go into orbit, grab, like, all the science. Although it is much harder to science spam when your, um, <clears throat> voice is croaking. No, it's much harder to science spam when you're on hard mode and it's like, no science for you. So anyway, let's get above the shores and take another EVA report. Grab ourselves all of the, um... Well, it's probably much easier to see from uh, out of the visor than it is out of that tiny little window. Interesting story about the little window in that capsule. Um, if you consider that capsule to be, you know, similar to um, a Mercury, well, a Mercury Redstone sort of capsule, is um, I think in the first one they didn't even have that little window, but they really the the, the astronauts really campaigned to get it because they wanted to stare out of the window because when you're in space you want to be able to see it, so they got that tiny little window, which was. Um, I believe actually once used with like uh, someone that was uh, one of the guys was writing or uh, like putting marks on the window because there was some sort of issue that required him to you know maneuver manually or you know ma maneuver more manually than usual and uh, one guy spent so long looking out of the window and uh, like tilting his capsule to look at like interesting things that he wanted to see that he almost uh, almost ran out of fuel and got maybe even stuck in space which would have been uh, well awful I don't know why I'm laughing but. Uh, that would um that would that would be rather terrible to be stuck in space because you wanted to look at something pretty. Anyway, I'm just trying to grab as many kind of things as possible. That Highlands report I'd already grabbed. Um so yeah, I'm just gonna start speeding up again. Because there's a lot more of this kind of EVA spamming, and you of course you've seen it before. I mean, I imagine the majority of uh, the people watching this have probably done all the EVA reports you can imagine. Um, I don't think I've ever got all the science off um Kerbin. I don't think I've ever actually completed a career mode just because um, either the game corrupts halfway through, or I kind of get bored, or I start doing something else that doesn't update. And it's because I just take it really slow. I'm not, I'm never like, I'm gonna gun through the career mode, gotta get all the science. That's just such a boring way to do it. I like, like, taking my time and doing lots of little missions and repeat things and just, I don't know, just having fun with it. Because I saw a lot of people when career mode first come out just trying to get all the science, and they were like, well, this is boring. I was like, yeah, because you're not doing something interesting, you're just getting points, and points aren't very fun. Space exploration is very fun. Points is, points are boring. Um, but obviously science is important, but as a means to an... Okay. But I upgraded Sony Vegas. <laughs> it just blanked out a bit, Sony Vegas again. I have actually upgraded Sony Vegas. Um, but uh, anyway, now we are about to touch down on the ocean. Um, and yeah, we'll just leave this sped up because it's not... Particularly interesting, but there we go. Jebediah, touchdown, successful mission. The ships will go and fetch him and give us a bunch of science. And we don't have quite enough to unlock something new. We need 90 science. We have, like, 87. So my solution is this. Um, get a bit of science from the runway. Whenever you need a little bit of science, there's probably some you can get from the space center. And that will do nicely. Um, that'll grab us all the science we need, hopefully, um, so that I can unlock something new, something cool, something explosive. Probably, I have, I've not really, I've kind of forgotten what I unlocked, even though I'm pretty sure this was like a couple of hours ago. Um, yeah, there's kind of a lot of things I could unlock. I kind of want some jets so I can do some visual surveys of Kerbin, because I haven't really done any of those missions yet. But, eh, I don't know. Um, 
Science labs, I mean, there is the thermometer, but they're not massively useful for me, for, to me yet. Although building a station, maybe. I've got lots of people wanting me to build stations. And by people, I mean missions, not people in the comments. Although maybe they will all start being all like, Ah, but I put a did the curve thing in the comments. Uh, <laughs> and I was thinking of getting bigger rockets, but now I'm thinking I'm going, starting to go for moon landings. Cough this episode. So I kind of want that smaller engine, given that it's incredibly useful. And fuel cross speed is in incredibly useful as well. Crossfeed is um, just like super important. Um, I still haven't like unlocked all of these things. I just no, I don't need them yet, so I'm not going to waste the money um, until I really need them because I'm being a little skimpy so I can get bigger buildings. I really want a new VAB just because 30 parts is really starting to get on my nerves. Um, it's, it's, yeah, I've got like the new, um, I can have 140 tons worth of spacecraft because I have the new launch pad but 30 parts still in the VAB but it's like 420 grand that's a lot of money anyway I'm doing a quick little test on my um lo my lunar lander my moon lander I'm just testing the crossfeed type deal um and that seems to work fine so um yeah so that's just a little test I was running but anyway we have something happening I'm pretty sure this is yeah we've got a polar orbit to get to um, this is basically just raising a little money, and we will do something different after this, but this is all sped up, and this little bit is quite interesting. And we are going into a very high polar orbit, very difficult, so I have constructed myself a new general purpose rocket. Um, this will obviously need to point north to go into a polar orbit, because, you know, logic. Until I realised it shouldn't be going north, it should be going south, because that's what's demanded. Then I flip out, and kind of lose control. And then I'm thinking, I'm bringing this back, this is my damn rocket, I'm not paying for this. So yeah, I do try to land it, and it goes great, totally great. This goes so well. Um, it is a little dark, I'm sorry, we had to launch on the daylight, uh, the day-night Terminator just because of the, uh, you know, goal of the mission. But I have turned the ambient light up a bit, but I still think the video quality might not be 100%. But anyway, we lose most of the rocket because, um, well, because just Farrah Aerospace hates me. Um, but yeah, I tried to change direction mid-flight because I was going the wrong way. I should have been burning south, not north. But anyway, we recover that, and that's some, um, some grand science for us. Well, not science, a little bit of money back is what I meant to say. Um, and I think there's some more debris over there, but I can't see it. So, although I think I may have landed on, well, I don't know where. Anyway, let's grab that back as well, and then let's just go again. Same rocket, um, slightly different launch. I'm going to point the right way this time. Um... But yeah, this is, uh, I, this is kind of my general purpose rocket, because I've been basically just building as big a rocket as I can build um, for, like, moon missions, and thinking when I have to go to a difficult orbit for a mission, I'm just like, use the moon rocket, it's pretty good. And I like, I like doing that, I like reusing other rockets, but this is a relatively cheap way, because it gets a lot of its thrust from solid rocket boosters, and um, as much as mixing fuel types is a dangerous thing... Um, <laughs> This is Kerbal Space Program, so Danger is my middle name-ish. Actually, no, my middle name is David, which means I have no idea. I know my first name is Rock in Gaelic. No, Rock in... Um, something, one of those weird languages that isn't really a thing. I think maybe Latin. And I know Craig is Rock in Gaelic, because I am... I was like, freaking love Craig Ferguson. Um, and he was saying about it, and I was like, oh, we're like bros. Um... Although Craig Ferguson's probably infinitely cooler than me. Uh, <laughs> even though he's like an old Scottish guy. Um, anyway, let's get into this crazy orbit they want. I don't know what they're doing here. I guess occasionally looking at the moon. Um, I reckon this is actually part of a game um, the engineers are playing called Dodge the Moon. And they decided to spend an insane amount of money. <laughs> yeah, this was quite expensive. I think this was about a 15 grand rocket and satellite. Although the payment was 14 grand up front and 70 grand when I finish it. Anyway, I've got a lot of tweaking to do, so I'm doing it in a very basic bitch sort of way, just going around burning prograde and retrograde and doing a few inclination changes rather than doing something smart with radial burns and anti-radial burns. Um, I just kind of do it very simply so I don't mess it up because, you know, I don't have ca um, patched conics which kind of secure your kind of understanding of orbital mechanics. Anyway, we get that, and there's 70 grand, which you didn't see. And this uh, probe's kind of cool. It has a little RCS thrusters on it. Um, I do quite like this. It's another small satellite, but again, it was a difficult orbit. Anyway, now it's time to go to the moon. Because the moon has eluded us for like five or six... Well, this is sixth episode, so yeah, six episodes. 
Um, so yeah, we're gonna go to the moon. Um, you'll notice there's no person here thinking, Peter, what are you doing? You forgot your guy. I'm thinking, no. I'm gonna go for a probe first. Not because, well, there are a few reasons. Firstly, the mission doesn't state that I have to take a man to the moon. Um, secondly, I don't have very big fairings, so I can't fit my kind of normal lander designs in there, so it would be kind of difficult, not impossible, but just a little difficult to land with a science payload. Um, and thirdly, I, I'm i a little obsessed with getting things kind of accurate. Not really accurate. I mean, if you've ever heard me talk about anything to do with science, you'll know I'm not a crazy for accurate, but I like to land probes on things before I land human, well, kerbals on things, and I like to just kind of, I don't know, I like to take my time. Um, so yeah, that's just what this is. Just completing the mission, getting some money, making it a little easier. Um, but yeah, I mean, basically it would have been pretty constrained by hardware, just because, well, I mean, I didn't have very big fairings or particularly big rockets, so, you know, because my lander designs are just quite wide. I, I Pretty wide lander designs, so, yeah, I wanted bigger fairings before that. So I'm just going to do this, get some money, get some science, um, get paid, uh, more money, more problems. Um, but yeah, so we're just going to, you know, move along to the moon. Again, I don't have any patched conics yet, so no planning, so I kind of have to guess. Um, I've noticed a lot I've been getting way too close to the moon, but I'd rather be too close than miss the sphere of influence, because then it's just, oh, whole different ball game. Um, but yeah, so I'm just going to try and, you know, as long as, even if it's looking, if it's not particularly efficient, I have to do a correction, I'd rather that than miss. Now I have a ton of fuel, because this is, um, I believe this is my, um, that same rocket again, um, that I used for the, uh, geo communication, no, the polar satellite, um, it's called Python 1, um, why does that sound familiar? I know Python's a programming language. Python 1. I don't know. Anyway, it's called Python 1. Um, and this, um, uh, what's this called? This is called the Panther 1. My probe, my lander probe is uh, the Panther. And I think that's probably what I'm going to call a lot of my um, landing in the Kerbin system probes. Just because I really like the name. It's just Panther sounds cool. Um, it's the White Panther. Uh, but yeah, this is a very skimpily built lander. It has three landing legs because of mass constraints and part constraints and obviously it doesn't need four because three is fine um and it's not i think it's only got one battery um which is on the other side to the communications array this isn't going coming back by the way i just thought it would just be appropriate i like leaving things places as well i like leaving a mark um so yeah basically i'm getting way less science than i should just because i respond really well to precedents and superlatives so yeah and anyway we've slowed down to um one times time accelerate so that we can uh, see the landing as as I saw it. Um, as I saw it when I touched down on the moon for the first time. I always love landing on the moon these days. Because when I first started playing, the moon was kind of bland. There was nothing really going on. It was mostly flat land. But now they procedurally, procedurally generated. Quite a hard word to say when you're, um, I don't know, when you, I, I don't know. I find it hard to say proce procedurally. Um, don't know why. Never noticed that before. But anyway, yeah. Uh, now it's just... Wherever you go, there's also always a great crater or a cliff or a ravine, and it's just great. I just love the moon. Um, but yeah, let's get ourselves some science. I'm thinking uh, Mystery Goo first. Not Mystery Goo, Materials Bay. That's the high payout. Um, yeah, look at that. Like 90 science, and we're going to get 12. That's demoralizing. Um, I may have been 60 science. I can't really see. I have, have to watch this in half resolution as Sony Vegas struggles to keep up. But that's fine, because I get the gist, and I remember it vaguely. Um, but yeah, we've completed all three of our missions. Um, we have finished exploring the moon, technically, according to the mission. But obviously I will send many a mission here, with men walking around, and probes landing, and rovers, and men grabbing science. Well, men, I mean kerbals. Kerbal men. Um, no women, though. No women. Women aren't allowed in space. What are you talking about? This is the uh, 1950s. Uh, or... 1960s would be more likely. Um, no, but you know, space is for everyone. But it's nice um, if co if countries kind of have a bit of contest between them. Not like Russia and America having a big missile fight. Um, but you know, like y you need competition to drive making stuff better. Or you just get the kind of situation like with Lockheed Martin, where your rockets are really expensive, really old, and are just made in Russia. Um, yeah, I'm not a big fan of, like, the Delta rockets. I mean, the, the, I mean, the Delta IV heavies are great rocket. It lifts quite a lot of, you know, mass, but, um, 
stupidly expensive. I mean, look at like Falcon 9, for instance. That's like a third of the price of American rockets. So, you know. Anyway, let's take a look at some of these um, some of these missions. There are a lot of cool ones. I'm liking this build a surface outpost on Minmus mainly because I had an 80 grand advance. And I had a massive payout. It was like 200, I think it was like about 270 grand payout at the end. So, and that has like a four year longevity. So I can do that whenever. But I'm just trying to get a bunch of advances so that I can upgrade some of my buildings, namely the tracking station, so that I can have patched conics. I would very much like to upgrade the VAB, but again, it's going to be put off because um, it's just, just so expensive to upgrade it. Um, and I am going to just at some point spam a bunch of money and just get a better VAB because I have a better, I have the better launch pad, better tracking station and a better place to get contracts now. So yeah, it's all, you know, starting to look up, but I would very much like a VAB. I mean, I really like how this um, tracking station looks now, but yeah, k uh, patched conics is uh, going to be really useful. Anyway, let's jump onto a launch. This is another, well, it's another Python 1, isn't it? It's uh, my little vehicle. It's taking something, our first probe to Minmus, um, and it will be grand. Um, so yeah, let's just, uh, there's a little pause there, sorry, I was, I actually had dinner in the middle of this, but I edited it out through the magic of editing. But then we flip, I try to gain control, but it is not to be. I do everything I can, but we're not going to Minmus today, and we'll just flip out of control. I think that's like my second failure in this one episode. It's getting pretty expensive to not be very good at Kerbal Space Program. Uh, <laughs> But uh, anyway, let's uh, let's slow it down and see how I tried to deal with this. Uh, decouple the stage accidentally. Um, anyway, but I wasn't going to land that anyway. I remember I have a parachute on this because this was coming back. So I might be able to land this safely. We'll let the main stage fall back to Earth. Um, but, you know, this will have to, you know, land by itself. I was actually thinking about the, uh, the reusability of the Falcon 9. If they ever crack it, if they ever figure out how to reuse it. I was thinking, say there was like some sort of failure that didn't destroy the rocket, they could just like, they could just like think, ah, abort the mission, just land somewhere, bring everything back, land the whole rocket, it'd be great. Um, probably wouldn't work, and if there's a failure, it probably, it doesn't work like Kerbal Space Program where it just flips out. I'm surprised Ferrum Aerospace isn't tearing my rockets apart like usual. But anyway, let's try to touch down, get some of our money back, um, but obviously it falls over and that smashes it. But there are bits in there, so I'm gonna try and, you know, fish those bits out and get some money back. So, yeah, I recover the vessel, um, which will just be the, f I imagine the probe or something, um, which is nice, it'll be a little bit of, a little bit of Monet, um, a little bit of Manet. <gasps> what? Anyway, uh, next we get only about a grand back, but out in the ocean there are bits of rocket that we're gonna go and fish out, recover. Yeah, see a little bit of money at the top, that one is, ooh, about a grand. And this one, ooh, that was about four grand. So yeah, we got a lot of our money back. But anyway, um, th that is it for this episode. I hope, you've en I hope you've enjoyed it. It's started replaying on my screen. But anyway, yeah, I, I hope you'll come back next episode for lots more exploring of the moon and Minmus and getting money and things. I will see you next time. <laughs>